Happy second Sunday of Easter. I want to share with you a part of the gospel for today's Mass that we read at Mass today. It's from the Gospel of John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Isn't it wonderful in this passage that I just read that the first words out of Jesus are, Peace be with you. And these are to his apostles who are behind closed doors, locked doors, and they are in fear. Fear of the Jews, fear of the other people, the Romans, fear, just filled with fear. And yet the words of Jesus are, peace be with you. This is Divine Mercy Sunday, and our Lord wants us to be at peace, to be at peace with our brothers and sisters, but most of all, most importantly, to be at peace with Him, and to not let fear and shame of our sins hold us back from seeking reconciliation from Him to seeking forgiveness. I like what the Church says in the Catechism, and I'm going to read from uh, Catechism, well, paragraph 1452 about contrition, perfect contrition. When it arises from a love by which God is loved above all else, contrition is called perfect, in parentheses, contrition of charity. Such contrition remits, remits venial sin. It also obtains forgiveness of mortal sins if it includes the firm resolution to have recourse to sacramental confession as soon as possible. When we were preparing for Holy Communion, when we were children preparing for our first confession, many of us were taught an act of contrition. I have it here of uh, various copies, but here's one. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who are all, all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Perhaps you were taught that very prayer or one very similar to it. But on this Divine Mercy Sunday, I implore you to, to make a perfect contrition, to come before God, expressing your sorrow for your sins out of love for Him first. And the other consequences that come with sin, uh, sin that's secondary, but it's love for God. I've offended a God. And to not let fear or shame stand in the way. The locked doors and the fear that the apostles had couldn't keep Jesus away from them. He came to them. Our Lord desires to come to us. And so this Divine Mercy Sunday, it's a Sunday set aside for special graces to be received by the faithful. And I also ask you to make a spiritual communion, which you've heard about that in the last few weeks as we've been under this shelter in, to wholeheartedly desire to receive our Lord spiritually. By doing a spiritual communion and a act of contrition with the firmness of heart that it's, a, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed against God out of love for Him. I love Him so much. We open ourselves up to receive the wonderful graces that God has to give us. The church is not going to let go of the Easter celebration. This is the second Sunday of Easter. We're going to be in the Easter season for another five more weeks. Five more weeks to rejoice in the Easter celebration, the Easter resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The locked doors and the fear that the apostles had couldn't keep Jesus away from them. And this pandemic, this shelter in, cannot keep Jesus away from us. So on this Divine Mercy Sunday, open your hearts and open your soul to receive our Lord and open them to receive his graces. May God bless you and your family. Amen.